Kim's. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to SenseCast, the international podcast from Hymns. I am your host, Jenny Axler, and in this episode, we are going to cover all the new functions, enhancements, and fixes in version 2.0 for the Sense Player. We have included many additions and enhancements based on our user feedback, and we really appreciate all the feedback that you've given us on the Sense Player. And of course, most of you already know that the big headliner here is going to be the addition of the ability to install. Android applications like Audible and Spotify and Bard Mobile. We have a lot to cover in this episode, so we're going to get right to it. Probably the most popular request we received when upgrading the Sense Player to version 2.0 is the ability to customize what movement units are available during playback when you're using the up and down arrows. So in this upgrade, we have done that in all playback situations, including the media player, the daisy player, both text and audio, the document reader, podcast playback, and recordings playback. You will now find in each of these program menus a new option called Movement Unit Settings. Here is a demo of this, now from the media player. Movement Unit Settings Dialog Menu Item The final item here is called Movement Unit Settings. This option allows you to customize that cycle to include only the things that you prefer to use. So you don't have to arrow up and down through all of those options just to access the options that you use most often. So let me press the OK key here. Movement Unit Settings dialog. Go to one track on list item. So this is just a normal settings dialog, and I'll use the up and down arrows to move among the various options, and the left and right arrows to toggle them on or off. By default, everything is turned on. The first option is go to one track. I'll go ahead and leave that on. I'll arrow down. Go to five tracks on list item. I don't generally need five or ten tracks, so I'm going to press the right arrow to turn that off. Off list item. I'll arrow down. Go to 10 tracks. On list item. Off. off list item. Go to first or last track. On list item. I'll keep that turned on. Go to beginning or end. On list item. I don't generally need both though, so I'll turn off that off. Off list item. Five seconds. On list item. I'm going to turn that off. Off list item. 10 seconds. On list item. I'll leave that on. 30 seconds. On list item. Off list turn item. That off. One minute. On list item. Three minutes. On list I off list I five minutes on list I ten minutes off list I fifteen minutes off list item twenty minutes on off list I thirty minutes on list off list item one hour on off list item and those are all of my choices. So now that I have chosen all the ones that I want to have turned off, I'm going to press the OK key. Now one quick thing to note. Mark and chapter navigation are supported only if they are present. You cannot turn these on or off in the movement unit settings as you don't even see them if they're not there. So because they only appear if they are present, that's your only indicator that you can even move by these options. So we don't include them. I'm going to press the OK key and I've returned to my playback area. Now I'm going to press the down arrow to move through the various options I have for selecting movement units. Go to first or last track, 10 seconds, one minute, five minutes, go to one track, go to first or last track, now this list is much, much more manageable. The movement unit settings are actually available in every playback area on the unit, whether we're talking about the media player, Dizzy player, document reader, podcasts, when playing back recordings. You'll be able to set this according to what's available in that context and customize this cycle to your liking. Another quick note about movement units. When you are playing only one track, the options for track movement, such as five tracks, 10 tracks, first or last track, one track, etc., will automatically be removed from the movement unit cycle with the up and down arrows. Another very popular request we had was the ability to handle audiobooks appropriately. So we've actually added the ability to deal with audiobook playlists, and we've also added the ability to save permanent media playlists as well. Again, here is a demo from the media player. 
as you continue to open files using the Media Players Explorer, they are actually added to your currently playing list, which of course will be erased if it should be cleared, which will generally happen if you happen to choose a media folder from the file manager. In that case, it's going to create a new playlist from your current folder. But when I say that it's going to create a new playlist or it's going to add to your currently playing list, these aren't permanent playlists. These are just the currently playing list of items that are open right now. In my case, the current playlist is a set of 42 tracks by Billy Joel. If I want to make it easier on myself to access all of this at once later, I can save this as a permanent playlist. I'll press the menu key. Menu opened. Explorer mode zero long dialogue menu item. I'm going to arrow down. Add to current playlist dialogue menu item. I can add something to the current playlist, which we'll get to in a moment. Save as playlist dialogue menu item. But this is what I would like. So I'm going to save as playlist. I'll press OK. Save as playlist dialog file name colon Billy Joel edit box. It's giving me the name Billy Joel because that was the last folder I actually accessed. So it does sort of assume that you might want to save the playlist for your current folder name. I actually don't want to do that. I'm going to call this old soft because we're going to add some additional content to it. So. O. L. D space S O F T and I'll press OK. Save complete. So now I've saved this playlist of 42 Billy Joel files. Now there are a couple of things that you can do here. You can continue to open files from the Explorer and they will be added to your currently playing list. That's different from your current playlist. The currently playing list just again means the media files that are currently open. But if you would like to add to the permanent playlist, you're going to use this option. I'm going to go to the menu. Menu opened. Explore. Add to current playlist dialog menu item. And use the add to current playlist item. I'm going to press the OK key. Add to current playlist dialog. 01 keeping the faith mp3 media file list item and as with the explorer i'm placed in the currently open folder so i'm going to press the left arrow billy joel list item and i'm going to arrow down ba bonnie ba brook car car celine chicago classical li chicago list item i'm going to select this with the zero key selected Cla creep dan D dixie chick v eagle eagle eight eighties tape Elton John list item. I'm going to press select again. Selected. Air, Eva F F F F for Genesis Glor Gore Guns Heart Humor Indigo Indo in Indo Ins I J J Jamie O John Jill J Jod John 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 Jer Carl Kate Vogel Kathy and then Ken Krista Dutter Kenny Loggins list item. Yes, I know I'm a dork. Okay, I'm going to select this folder also. Selected. And I'll press the OK key. 107 files added to playlist. And as you heard, many, many more files from all of those folders were added to the playlist. Okay, so how do I find this playlist? You can do this either through the file manager or through the explorer. I'm actually going to close the media player. File manager. I'm going to press the OK key. File manager. Flash disk list item. I'm going to arrow down. SD list item. Right arrow. Adams downloads list item. Let's jump down. Library list. Man, map, mic, movie, music list item. And right arrow. Mark list item. Arrow down. Playlists list. Dave's music. Old soft M3U media file list item. Now I'm launching this from the file manager. I'll press OK. So it took a second to load all those 149 files. So now to be sure that we've done what we think we've done, let's press zero and get the playlist information. Play information dialog. Zero one keep current time, total time, current playlist, total playlist, current track number, one static box, total track number, 
149 static box. So you can hear all of the files that I thought should have been added to this playlist were in fact added. So just to quickly reiterate, if you want to create a playlist of the currently open files, the best way to do it is to open everything you want to add to the playlist, as it continues to accumulate as long as you open it using the Media Players Explorer. If you want to start with a clean playlist, it's best to open a folder or a set of files from the file manager, and that will start it over. Once you have accumulated the files that you want to save as a playlist, choose Save as a Playlist from the menu. If you want to add files to the permanent current playlist, choose Add to the currently playing list from the menu, and then choose your files the same way that you would in the Explorer. I hope this all makes sense. Remember though that I said that there were two types of playlists that we offer. The second type of playlist applies specifically to audiobooks. To access this option, you specifically have to be located in the audiobooks folder. Whether that's on your flash disk, on an SD card, or a connected USB drive, it doesn't matter, but you do have to be located in the audiobooks folder for this next thing to be possible. So the first thing to note is that if you have a set of MP3 or other audio file types that you want to act as an audiobook, the first thing you need to do is to save them to one of those audiobooks folders. So I do need to start with a clean playlist now. So I'm actually going to close the media player and I'm going to go to the file manager to get this going. Old soft M3U media file list item. And because I launched that playlist from the file manager when I closed the media player, I returned there to my music folder on my SD card. I need to go to the flash disk, so I'm gonna press the pound key to jump to the disk SD list. list item. I'll arrow up. Flash disk list item. I'll right arrow. Apps list item. I'm going to arrow down. Audiobooks list item. And this is what I want. I'm going to press the right arrow. Playlist, sense, sense, chapter one, MP3 media file list item. So now I have a few audiobooks. I am going to select this. Selected. Chapter 2 MP3 media file list item. Selected. And I'll just select these first two for now. You could actually, again, play an entire folder or select individual files. It really just depends on what you need to do. All right, I'm going to press the OK key to launch the media player with these two files. Media player. And the file is now opened, and this beautiful introductory music for the audiobook is now playing. Arthur Audio presents The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis. And I'll go ahead and pause playback with my OK key. Now I'm going to press the menu key. Menu opened. Explorer mode zero long dialog menu item. And I'll arrow down. Add to current playlist dialog menu item. And I have my expected add to playlist item, but if I arrow down one more time, save as audiobook dialog menu item. Remember before I had the option to save as playlist. Now I have the option to save as audiobook. And there is a difference when you save as an audiobook. For example, bookmarks will apply to the entirety of the playlist, not just the current file. Your exit position will also be remembered for the entire playlist. In addition, bookmarks will always be saved, or rather your exit mark will always be saved, regardless of how you have this position set in the media player settings. The go to time and go to percentage movements also apply to the entire playlist as opposed to just the current track as they would in a normal media playlist. You also don't have options like repeat and shuffle that don't make any sense in an audiobook context. So this is basically a media playlist, but it's a media playlist with some special characteristics that make sense when you are playing an audiobook. So once again, if you want to save a group of files as an audiobook rather than a traditional media playlist, make sure to place them in the audiobooks folder, and then you will see the save as audiobook option in the menu rather than the save as playlist option. If you have media in any other folder on any connected drive, you will see the save as playlist option, the traditional media playlist option. So this will only appear if you are accessing files from the audiobooks folder.
One very popular request from our European contingent is the ability to be able to read documents and books in different languages. For this reason, we've also now added the ability to set a different reading voice in your DAISY text playback, as well as when reading documents in the document reader. Of course, this can also be useful for using two voices in the same language, as you can easily distinguish between system messages and your reading voice, as well as being able to control and change your reading voice depending on the document or book you're reading and what personality you want to use. A demo of this now from the DAISY player. As is mostly consistent during playback, I can press the star key to open settings. Daisy settings dialog. Set speed, five list item. I'll arrow down. Set pitch, five list item. Set volume, five list item. Voice name, English Zoe list item. I'll press the right arrow. English Samantha list item. English Scotland Fio. English Australia Karen list I. English Nathan list item. English Susan list I. Korean Yuna list I. UK English Kate list item. I think because this is a nice British novel, I will use a UK voice. I'll press OK to save the setting. Imprint of Scholastic Incorporated. I've text copyright 2000. So now, of course, it's reading with a different voice, and if I use my up and down arrows to move among the navigation units... Level 1. Heading. 2016 by Harry Potter Theatrical Product. My main TTS is still using the Zoe voice, however, my book voice is now using UK English Kate. In the web radio, we've now added the ability to reorganize your web radio stations so that you can group like items or be able to live tune in groups that are sensible or pleasing to you. A demo of this from the web radio. You may find as you add stations that you wish you could reorganize them to be in groups of like stations, especially for, you know, as I pointed out, all this navigation that we have available. It can be easier if things are sort of grouped in an organized way. You also might prefer this when you're live tuning because you can listen to a group of stations that are somewhat similar. For example, all your decade stations or soft rock stations or whatever you might want to do with it. Either way, you can reorganize the channels if you would like. To do that, you're going to press the number two, or you can choose move channel from the menu. The first thing I want to do is locate my BBC Radio 4 Extra channel. So I'm going to press the number three to move up from the bottom. RTE Acute Radio 1 Extra up. 7 R B B B BBC Radio 4 Extra 6695 list item. And I will press the number two right now. Use the arrow keys to navigate to the channel below the position you want to move to and press number two again. And it gives me this instruction, use the arrow keys to navigate below the position you want to move to and press the number two again. So it will paste it above your current position. So now I'm going to arrow up. BBC, B, B, C, 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 N, B, Podcast Radio 5395 list item. So I actually prefer to have BBC Radio 4 Extra in with my audiobook radio and podcast radio, etc. Because to me, I feel like it's a similar genre of station. So I'm going to paste it here by pressing the number two. Channel moved successfully. And now if I arrow up. Audiobook Radio 5295 list item. And down. BBC Radio 4 Extra 5395 list item. And again. Podcast Radio 5495 list item. So it did indeed insert it above Podcast Radio, which is the position I requested. One of the biggest challenges when creating a device like the Sense Player is to try and be sure that it remains traditionally intuitive and accessible in a way that the blind and visually impaired are used to, but also remains contemporary and flexible to future growth and to changes in technology and mainstream service offerings. While it's not an exact science, one of the ways that we've tried to do this with the Sense Player is in addition to offering a robust internal 
multimedia software suite, with version 2.0, we also offer the ability to install mainstream Android applications. Now, it should be noted that we do not intend for this to be a smartphone replacement, and it certainly isn't. Our main focus here is to enhance and expand the multimedia offerings of the Sense Player. That isn't to suggest that you are unable to install other types of applications. However, doing so may require a bit of experimentation and workaround on your part. One of the reasons for this is that it's not a Google certified device, and that does result in a few limitations that we will get to in practical terms later in this tutorial. For now though, let's talk about how to obtain and install applications and what types of apps we expect to work well on the Sense Player. There are two ways to install applications on the Sense Player. We provide an app installer to conveniently and easily install applications that work well on the Sense Player that are compatible to its purpose and that we think will be popular among users. When you receive your Sense Player, the final item in the home menu is all apps. All apps. This is where your Android apps will reside. When your Sense Player arrives, it will contain only one item. App Installer. The App Installer. For those of you who have been listening to this from the beginning, you may remember the Voice Installer from the Setting Things Up tutorial. The App Installer works exactly the same way. I'll press OK here. App Download Dialog. Apple Music 115 List Item. When you open the App Installer, it connects to our server and shows you a list of applications that we have available for download that are not currently installed on your unit. Right now, this does contain only 15 applications. However, this list can be completely dynamic. As it is hosted on our server, we can add and remove applications at any time. And we expect that as we continue to discover and test compatible apps, the list will grow. Initially, we want to make sure and include apps that we know for sure will work very well on the device. I can move among the apps using the up and down arrows. Audible 215 list item, Bard Mobile 315, BBC Sounds 450, Chirp 515 list, Chrome 615 list item, Dolphin Easy Reader 7, Dropbox 815, Netflix 915, Pandora 1015, Zero 1115, Skype 1215, Spotify 13, 15, Zoom 14, 15, Speak 15, 15, List Item. As you can hear, most of these are multimedia and communications applications. There are a couple of exceptions. You may have noticed the Chrome browser and the eSpeak TTS synthesizer. These are included because foundationally, they are necessary for running many of the other applications here in this list, as well as others that are not in this list. The Chrome browser, for example, is necessary for signing in to most third-party applications that require you to access a website. Many applications specific to the visually impaired use Android native TTS. And if you do not have one of those installed, it often often can't run. As I mentioned, we don't support Google services on this device, so Google TTS is not natively installed. For that reason, we include the eSpeak TTS to take care of those situations where native Android TTS is required. One of the most notable examples of this is Bard Mobile. Generally, it's going to run using our mobile screen reader and whatever TTS voice you have loaded and chosen. However, there are a few controls like speed controls and rewinding and fast forwarding, etc., that are not spoken by Google accessibility and thus are self voiced by a native Android TTS engine, thus eSpeak. If you want to install an application, all you need to do is press OK on it. And since I know I need eSpeak, I'll go ahead and do that right now. Pro Download complete. Installing eSpeak. Installation complete. It's that quick and that simple. Now I'm placed back in the All Apps menu. And if I arrow up, App Installer, and arrow down, eSpeak. I now see eSpeak in my list of applications. I'm going to go back up to the App Installer. App Installer. And I'll press OK. App Download Dialog. App Apple Music 114 List Item. So now let me arrow down to Bard Mobile. Audible Bard Mobile List Item. 
and I'll press OK here. Download complete. Installing Bard Mobile. Installation complete. Bard Mobile. You can repeat that process until you've installed every app in the list if you so choose. As I mentioned, we do highly recommend installing the Chrome browser, as if you don't, you will have difficulty signing into applications like Dropbox and Netflix, etc. The other method for installing applications is to use the file manager. You can download Android package kits or APKs from various reputable websites, including APK Pure, APK Mirror. Once you've downloaded these files, you can simply copy them to your SensePlayer's flash disk, an SD card, or a connected USB drive, and just press OK on them from the file manager. I'm going to install Amazon Alexa that way. You'll notice this is not in our installer. It is, however, rather useful on the Sense Player, but it also offers some challenges. So I'm going to use that to demonstrate those. But first, let's get it installed. I'm going to press my Home button to return to the main menu. File Manager. And I'll press the OK key. File Manager. Flash Disk 1 to list item. I have this application on a USB drive, so I'll arrow down. USB 2 to list item. And press the right arrow. Recycle bin 139, Harry Pod, applications 339 list item. And I have a folder of applications here. I'll press the right arrow again. Amazon Alexa 2, 2, 511197, 0 APK unknown file type 110 list item. Now it will tell you that it's an unknown file type, and it's basically telling you that because it doesn't know how to play it back. But that doesn't mean it doesn't know how to read it. If I press the OK key here, Installing Amazon Alexa. Installation complete. Amazon Alexa 2, 2, 511197, 0 APK unknown file type 110 list item. So it installed the application and placed me back in the file manager at my current position. I'll press my home key again. File manager. An arrow up to all apps. All apps. And press OK. Amazon Alexa. And sure enough, Amazon Alexa is now the first item in my all apps list because it is first in alphabetical order. And it was indeed installed. So now let's take a look at how to navigate and use apps using our mobile screen reader on the Sense Player. We'll get back to Amazon Alexa in a bit. I'm going to arrow down. Amazon Apple Music. Let's take a look at Apple Music. I'll press the OK key. Apple Music. Apple Library out of grid. Recently added. So Apple Music is now opened, and it let me know where I am in the application. There are a few ways to navigate here. First of all, navigation is more traditionally like an Android phone, or even an iPhone as far as that goes. The arrow keys are going to operate more like swiping than traditional sense player navigation. So if I want to move between items, I'm going to press the left and right arrows. Button only show music on this div. Switch off notch. Button listen now. Button browse. Ta button radio. Tab 3 of 5. Selected library. Tab 4 of 5. Button search. Tab 5 of 5. So you can hear this is a line of tabs that I'm just navigating with the right arrow. You can use the up and down arrows to move to the item directly above and directly below your current position. This is actually an Android screen reader function that we utilize because we think it will help you navigate more quickly through applications. Oftentimes, this actually navigates between different groups of items on the screen. If I arrow down, button further and further away, various artists row five, column two in grid. 20 rows, 3 columns. I'm now in the grid view of my recently played items, and it let me know where I'm at in the grid view. If I arrow up, button you've got a friend Jana Stanfield row 4. Now let me press the right arrow. Button underachievers anonymous Jana Stanfield column 3. Button you've got a friend Jana Stanfield column 2. With the left arrow, button that's the way I feel about you, live. Jenna Stanfield, column one. 
So if you are in a grid view or you're in a position where you have media controls on one line, tabs on another, the up and down arrows are going to move you among these groups and the left and right arrows will move you between individual items in each group. Now granted, in a list like this, you may not actually be aware of everything that's involved in the layout, but in many applications, for example, Bard Mobile, where you have transport controls on one line, next and previous, and the jump by movement unit on another line, you have the speed controls on yet another line. Once you memorize the layout of the applications that you use most often, this becomes extremely useful. Now, we can also use numbers 1 and 7 to go to the top and the bottom of the screen, just as we can in most areas of the Sense Player. So I'm going to press the number 1 to start at the top. Library out of grid. I also know that I'm going to find my play controls after the tab, so I'm going to right arrow a few times. But, button brow, button ready, selected library, button search, button playing power of 2 out of list, button play. And I'm going to press the OK key to play. Media control power of two. And I'll press it again to pause. Because that is one of the beauties of this, is that when you are located on a control, unlike when you're dealing with a touch screen and moving your phone around, you're going to stay right where you are. And you have this instant orientation. So all I need to do is press the OK key to pause and resume playback, almost just as though I was playing something internally. I can do the same with the next track. Let me press the right arrow again. Button next track. And I'll press the OK key. If I had only known. So I just keep pressing the OK key to keep moving. Now if I want to pause, I'll press the left arrow. Button pause. And I can do that. Now we do have universal media controls as well. So if you are not sure where you are in the application, you can also use the same media controls that you'll find we use in Smart Connect in the next section. So you can use OK plus the zero key to pause and resume playback. OK plus the hash key to go to the next track, and OK plus the star key to go to the previous track. I'll try that. It's not simple to say. OK plus star. View full lyrics. If I had OK plus hash. The thing about third-party apps as opposed to our internal applications is that they are generally a lot busier. There are a lot of things going on on the screen, and often the content is rather dynamic. So navigation can be a bit difficult, but we hope that some of these announcements in terms of column and row and the ability to use both sets of arrow keys for different purposes will help you navigate the layout more quickly, especially once you've become familiar with it. Since I talked about Bard Mobile, and I know this is going to be a very popular installation, let's take a look at that. I'll press my cancel key. Apple Music. And I'm going to arrow down. Audible. Bard Mobile. And I'll press the OK key here. Bard Mobile. Bard Mobile. Loading. Bookshelf. So you actually heard eSpeak chime in there with the loading message from Bard Mobile. But as you can hear, most of this is going to continue to be read by our mobile screen reader with your Nuance voice. Okay, so it let me know that I'm on the bookshelf tab. I'm going to press the right arrow. Button more options. Button audiobooks, four. In button audio magazines, zero. I can see the items in my bookshelf. I actually want to go to the now playing area. I'm going to use my number seven key to jump to the bottom because I know actually that it is the last item on the screen. Button now reading, tab four of four and list, four items, three. 
Now, it let me know that this is a list of four items, so I could use the left arrows to get to the other tabs in this list. So again, this would be an easy way to jump to the various categories. Button settings, tab, button get books, selected bookshelf, tab one of four, zero. Button now reading, tab four of four. I'll press okay here. Selected. Now I'm gonna press my number one to go back to the top. Nantucket, books one dash four out of list. And it tells me the title of my current book. Now I'm going to arrow down. Eight chapter, elapsed 27 hours, slider 77, progress, button bookmark, button next, button fast forward, button increase speed. Remember how I explained that the speed controls, the transport controls, and the move by controls are on separate lines. If I arrow up, button fast forward. Now if I press the left arrow, button play, button rewind. If I arrow up, button previous. And if I press the right arrow, button current level chapter jump by, button next. So when you're in an application like this, this makes a lot more sense in terms of being able to navigate things more quickly. As I said, this becomes especially true when you're familiar with the layout and you know where you want to go in terms of what that screen looks like and how the controls are laid out. I want to go back up to something that we saw earlier. Button bookmark. Slider 77. Progress bar 27 hours, 41 minutes, 9 seconds of 35 hours, 30 minutes, 43 seconds swipe up or swipe down to adjust. So this is asking me to adjust a slider. And we do have that ability as these are going to come up, especially in media applications. And to do that, you're going to press the voice control button together with the volume up and volume down buttons. I'll press voice control with volume down right now. And although it's not announcing the change, you can see it. I'm gonna arrow up. Elapsed 23, slider 67, progress bar 23 hours, 58 minutes, 14 seconds of 35 hours, 30 minutes, 43 seconds swipe up or swipe down to adjust. So each time I adjusted that slider, it was moving by 5%. And since I used the voice control button with the volume down key, it went backwards. If I pressed voice control with volume up, it will go forward by 5% each time. I'll do it once, twice, and again, we'll arrow up and back. Elapse. Slider 77, progress bar 27 hours, 31 minutes, 18 seconds of 35 hours, 30 minutes, 43 seconds swipe up or swipe down to adjust. Now I don't exactly know why that doesn't announce. And part of the reason why I went ahead and demoed that is that you will sometimes encounter these things. Some of this may be related to Sense Player, some of this we're still learning, but some of this is related to the applications themselves and what they announce and what they don't. I would actually hear this changing if I did this during playback. One other thing I wanna demonstrate is a start and stop hold. This is something that you usually do with the touch screen and specifically in Bard Mobile, this controls fast forward and rewind. We actually handle this with a short press of the zero key. A long press of the zero key will long press an item in an Android application, which may bring up a context menu or other things. But let's go back down. Button bookmark, button next, button fast forward. And I'm gonna press the left arrow button rewind. And I'm going to press the zero key. Back 20 seconds. Back one minute. Back five minutes. This is a similar function to pressing and holding the right and left arrows in our media playback situations. But because we can't send a hold in quite the same way when we're sending to third-party apps, we use a short press of zero to start and stop the hold. And as you heard, eSpeak actually gave you these announcements as they are necessary to self-voice. That is basically how the mobile screen reader functions. You can get a complete list of the keystrokes that are supported in the user manual. We do also support using the star key to create a label where you have unlabeled buttons, etc. However, most of the apps that we include in the installer will not require that. 
You are also, of course, able to type in edit boxes using your normal text entry method. If you need to type in an edit box, you press OK to activate it, very similarly to how you would do it in JAWS in Forms mode or on the Braille Sense with the press of the Enter key. Before we wrap this up, though, I want to talk about some of the limitations that we have and how they affect some of the apps that you may choose to install on your own. I'll press the Cancel key. Please press back button again to exit app. And I'll do that again. Amazon Alexa. And I'm back in my all apps menu, and I'm actually going to press OK on Amazon Alexa. Now I have done my sign in and set up and everything. So when I open this, it should be good to go. Amazon Alexa. Sense player launcher. Amazon Alexa won't run without Google Play services, which are not supported by your device. Button OK. When it opens, every time I get this error that Amazon Alexa will not run without Google services. And you will find that there are a no few- No network location provider is installed. NLP is necessary for network location fixes. And this is another error that pops up all the time. No network location is installed. Again, this is an Android framework function that we don't support because we are not running all the packages that would normally be installed on an Android phone. However, that isn't to say that Amazon Alexa is unusable. I'm going to press OK on this Google Services error. Amazon button type with Alexa. And the app still opens. Everything looks good. Button help and feedback. Button activity. Button Thursday, July. Image play button. Double. Button remove. One, three. So I'm getting my previous history of commands, all the things that I would expect to see in the app. I've also set up hands-free service. So, Alexa. Button type convert Alexa 68 out of list. degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. 68 degrees Fahrenheit is 20 degrees Celsius. So she works generally as you would expect her to work. However, there are some limitations. Alexa. Alexa, no What's network the weather? location provider is installed. NLP is right now in Austin, it's 85 degrees fixes. Fahrenheit with mostly clear skies. Today's forecast has partly sunny weather, with a high of 106 degrees and a low of 79 degrees. Also, there's a heat advisory in effect until Saturday, July 22nd, 8 p.m. Most of you who know me at all know that I don't live anywhere near Austin, Texas. I actually live in South Korea. So she gave me Austin's weather. And why did she do that? The reason that she did that is because this is my default Amazon location for my account because I set it up when I was in Austin, Texas. Remember that little error that she just gave about no network location? She can't automatically detect my location and cannot give me location-based information. Again, though, that's not a non-starter. Let me try this again. Alexa. Alexa. What's the weather in Daejeon, South Korea? Currently, in Daejeon, South Korea, it's 83 degrees Fahrenheit with cloudy skies. Today, you can expect rainy weather with a high of 87 degrees and a low of 74 degrees. So again, I can get the information if I ask her specifically for the location that I want. I have generally gotten her to do most things that I want, but I'm going to suggest that I probably have not tested every possible thing that she can do. And there may be limitations related to the lack of Google services that even I'm not aware of. Some limitations that we do know exist, for example, if you want to use something like Envision AI or Be My Eyes, you can't sign into your Google account. So if your account is related to your Google account or is tied to your Google account, you're not going to be able to log in that way. You can do it if your account is just associated with your email. In most cases, it's pretty easy to create a new account based on your email. So if you really want to use it on the Sense Player, that's an option for you. But again, it's a workaround that you need to be aware of. Something that we really can't get past is the installation of other TTS engines where you've purchased add-ons and you've done that through the Play Store. Again, because you're unable to sign into your Google account, you're not going to have access to these. 
Applications like YouTube will not even run. Oddly enough, Google Lookout will, and I can't say why, and I can't say that if it will continue to do that permanently, but right now it does. However, when you open it, you will get that same Google services error, and again, you'll find that you might have some limitations related to not having Google services installed, although in general, it does work pretty well on the models with the camera, or rather the SensePlayer OCR model. I think something to keep in mind here is that this is a dynamic work in progress, and we will continue to learn what is possible and how to make the most of what the Sense Player can do, especially with these third party apps and our own mobile screen reader. That is going to wrap it up for the demonstration part of this. We do have other fixes and enhancements in this upgrade, including the ability to now navigate by chapter in podcasts and audio files where that is supported, the ability to use the new Bookshare v2.0 API, which of course then also supports the human narrated audio. We've also changed some things with the interface, including the order of the global options, and we've moved all voice-related parameters out to the voice options menu. We've also fixed many things related to podcast search, download, and playback. As always, you can find the complete list of changes in the release note that should come along with any announcement that you've received about this upgrade. If you have not received such an announcement, you should be able to find all of this information, including the associated downloads, manuals, and the full release note on either the HIMSS International or HIMSS Incorporated website. Thank you once again for listening, and we'll see you next time. HIMSS.